All those Proverbs 31 ladies feel great on their special day. Step one, locate some beautiful flowers. Moms love saving money, so try to find some free ones. Step two, get the flowers and the water as quick as you can. Can't have them dying on ya. Step three, find some more beautiful flowers, but this time let the scissors do all the work. Come on. Perfection. Step four, find a bow or something to jazz things up a bit. <laughs> Remember, people, it's all about the details. Step five, enlist your baby sister to help you make a thoughtful Mother's Day card. I knew you couldn't be trusted. Step six, if you have another sister waiting in the bullpen, grab her instead. Preferably one that appreciates the delicate art of watercoloring. You have a gift. Thank you. Hey, honey, I'm home. Hey, sweetie. It's a thought that counts, I guess. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I totally thought they were going to switch flowers on that one. Anybody else thought, th thought she was just going to move the card over? I loved that ending. <laughs> well, kids, what did you do for your mothers today? Just shout it out. You made a box and painted it today? This morning? Oh, you gave it to me today. We bought flowers for mommy. Anthony, what'd you do? Oh my goodness. A poem, a candle holder, and a card. So that's what we have to beat, man. Did any of you... Uh... <laughs> That's cheating. Okay, did anybody else send the link directly to your husband and go, I want this for Mother's Day? No, just Lindsay? Okay, just checking. Yeah, it's, it's special because she didn't know which one I purchased. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can't mess it up that way. Ver children, what did you do for mom today? <laughs> and then I made her breakfast. That sounds about right, yeah. Husbands, how about you? Any husbands do anything special this morning? Did you buy flowers? Did any of the you men not buy flowers this year? A good about 50 50? I bought clothes. <laughs> Oh, well, happy Mother's Day, but we want to know, you know, we want to get to know the mothers a little bit more this morning, and so I'm going to need some help from some kids because they know their mothers best. I need some volunteers. Anthony and James, any other volunteers want to come answer some questions? Oscar, yeah, you can come up. Down here, boys. I know it's exciting to be on stage, but down. You can stand on that step. That's what we'll let you do. All right. You guys ready to answer some questions about your mom? Jordan's coming. Yay! Okay, come on, Jordy. Yeah, you can stand up there so you can be taller than the boys. James, down. That's right. Only the shorter, shorter ones can be up there. All right. First of all, what is your mom's favorite thing to do? Walk. Walkie walk. Anthony, what's your mom's favorite thing to do? Spend time with our 
Spend time with his family. Oh, that's a good one. And he's just scoring points all over. Poem, candle holder, rehearsed answers. Okay, maybe not. What's your mom's favorite thing to do, Oscar? Sleeping. <laughs> it is, yeah. As, hey, as a mom and a parent, that is one of the all-time things. Thing. You, you know, yeah, but you. Jordy, what's your mom's favorite thing to do? Going on vacation. Oh, that's a good one. Going on vacation. With kids or without kids? What? Does she like going on vacation with her family or without her kids? With her family. Oh. I'm sure there's some truth to both of those. Crew, what's your mom's favorite thing to do? Sleep. Oh, okay. Favorite thing, mom's favorite thing to do? Read to her children. Read to her children. Again, I think some of these are rehearsed. They're trying to paint mom in a perfect light. What's your mom's favorite thing to do? Uh, the same as her. The same as her. Read to her children. That's awesome. All right, boys. Settle down now. <laughs> What does your mom do best? Walking. That's the same answer. What does she do the best? Uh, I don't know. All right. Anthony, what does your mom do best? What's she best at? Helping others. Yeah, I think I... My mom does that! My mom... Anthony, take the cheat sheet out of your pocket. Oscar, what does your mom do best? Teaching kids. Kids, oh, that's a good one. Oh, I know. Elodie, what are you doing up here? What does mom do? What is mom best at? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's about right. All right, Jordy, what's what's your mom best at? I'm gonna think of it. I don't know. Yet. I'm gonna think about it. I gotta think about it. Okay. Um, my favorite is coloring. <laughs> your favorite's coloring. What's your mom best at? What's she really good at? Cooking. Cooking. About you? That's what I was going <laughs> to Yeah, same answer as you. Hmm? What? I'm going to get there. My goodness. All right. Shh. This is my son. I apologize. I told you last week, right, that he likes to talk? You're getting a prime example firsthand. What is your mom's favorite thing that you do? Help other people. Oh, that's true. That's a good answer. Mom loves it when you help other people. What does your mom love it when you do? She likes when I use my mind to create stuff with Lego. These are very sophisticated answers. Adam, he's definitely Lindsay's uh, son. <laughs> all, right, all right, Oscar, what's, what's your mom's favorite thing that you do? Um, play nicely. That's a good one. Um, I, um, my mom is best at helping me when I get home. Oh, that's sweet. All right, Elodie, what's mom's favorite thing that you do? <laughs> when you go to sleep. She's not lying. Going to sleep. So clever, children. All right, what's your mom's favorite thing that you do? I don't know. You don't know? Hug her. Hug her. Oh, that's a good one, too. Give hugs. All right, should we do one more question? James, you're way too excited to answer questions. All right. If you could get your mom any present, what would you get her? A coffee mug. In all the things in all the world, what would you get her? A coffee mug. All right. Anthony, if you could get your mom any gift, what would you get for her? All my heart and love. I didn't have a prize or a winner for this one, but I think it's clear. <laughs> 
All right, if you can get your mom any gift, Oscar, what would it be? Flowers. Oh, that's a good one. Are you sure? that is there anything else you'd get your mom? All right, we'll come back. Oh, it's flowers. That's a good one. All right, Elodie, if you could get mom a present, what would you get her? Uh, a coffee cup. <laughs> yeah. A coffee cup. Crew, if you could get your mom a present, what would you get for her? Um, tulips. Oh, that's a good one. That's very good. What would you get your mom if you could get her any present? A garden. A garden. That's cute. A big plot of work. Flowers as well. We have a lot of flowers and a lot of coffee cups. Sorry, moms, no cars this year. I apologize. All right, kids. What your mom is. I want you to say happy Mother's Day all together. One, two, three. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, sir. She's a mom. Okay. You tell me, okay, we'll do one more since you guys are having so much fun. No, 60, what is your favorite thing about your mom? Uh, that we play together. Oh, that's a good one. My favorite thing about my mom is that she's compassionate and lovable. I swear, I, d I didn't give these answers out beforehand, I promise you. These are all on the fly. What's your favorite thing about your mom? That we go hikes together. We go on hikes together. That's a good one. I don't know. I don't know. Your favorite thing about your mom? That she cooks very well. That she cooks well. Hey, and that never goes away. I'm 36, and whenever mom says, I'm making this for dinner, I go, oh, maybe I should swing by. Crew, what's your favorite thing about your mom? Sleeping. <laughs> Elodie. Elodie, what's your favorite thing about mommy? You guys, all right. Jordy, and your favorite thing about your mom? She's nice to me. All right, kids, you can hop on down. No, you guys would stay up here all day. Great job. Thank you so much for answering. Make sure to tell. Yeah, we're going to watch one more video here, and then you guys are going to head out to watch. Uh, actually, while the video is playing, kids, you can go out to Children's Church. It's that time again, the time that we celebrate all the wonderful women that helped us be all we can be. I'm talking about moms. So moms and is for the many things she gave me. Hey, 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 Hi. hey, hello, what, what you doing, what you doing? I just thought we might do a song for the moms for Mother's Day. Hi moms, hi. Hi mommy, this is for you mommy. M is for the many things she gave us. We get it, we get it. M is for the many things she gave us. We get it, that's very cute, that's very cute. Oh, you're pretty quick for a bald guy. Everyone join in. Oh, means I just home. thought that we'd do a heartwarming message for all the moms out there instead of a campy little song. Oh, means that I owe her a lot. Okay, 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 you do it your way, I will do it my way. Moms, we owe you so much. Thank you for being she there. She is for tender, sweet caresses. H is for her hands that made a home. You've made a home. You've made a home, home on the range. Okay, stop it. She did make a home on the range. You probably called it like a stove, but we had a range at my house. And she made that word she... home, oh, that means so much. We still long to be in your presence. We still long for you to be proud of us. And yes, we still long to come home. Okay, this isn't working. What? No, no, no. You, you're you faking it. I am not. You're forcing the no, tears. No, it's real. No, no, no. This does not work in any way. This works. The song works. This does not work. I just thought we'd speak from the heart. That's what moms <sighs> want. You know what? Mom always liked you best anyway. <laughs> we don't even have to say mom. It's everything you've done to help me. Like that time you helped me find my shoes in first grade and in college. And there was that time also that uh, Tammy Cornball broke up with me. Crazy last name, right? But she was really a sweet girl until she broke up with me. And I was sad, but you made me feel better. You brought in some chocolate chip cookies and some milk and you made, you know what? What can make me feel this way, mother? Talking about my mom, mommy. Ooh. And 
R stands for right, and right you always shall be, right in our eyes, right with the values that you instilled in us so sacrificially, and right in how you taught us to love God and love others. And so mothers, today we say to you, Move them all together, they spell mother, the word that means the world to me, the word that means the world to mama. When I said I didn't like your meatloaf when I was five It's not my fault, it needed salt But that doesn't really matter Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Oh, that reminds me of having kids in the house. You can have two kids raised in the same household that end up so very different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you've seen my children, they ended up very, very different. I'm not sure how that happened. Now, being a mom, my, my wife sometimes, I'll come home and uh, she's an amazing mom, but I'll come home and she'll just be like, I'm done. You deal with them now. They're yours, right? Hand off. How many of you mothers know being a mom can sometimes be and seem like the most thankless job in the world? Just being truthful. Dads, we probably get more thanks because when we do things that moms do around the house, they go out of their way to thank us to try and prompt us to do more of those things. No, that only happens in my household. <clears throat> I'm still convinced my wife packs the dishwasher, though, in ways that bother me, so I'll always pack the dishwasher. I think she's just smarter than I am. Actually, that's the truth of what's happened here. The things that we've tried to do. But if you can relate to this, any of these things, you might be a mom. You might be a mom if dad is sitting right next to you on the couch, yet the kids are coming to ask you questions. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to lie. In my household, it was the opposite. My son would be like, dad. Mom would be like, what do you need, James? No, I want dad to help. I'm like sitting there. I'm like, oh, please. You might be a mom if you, uh, you can't remember the last time that you watched a show, but you can, you can quote multiple Disney movies. You might be a mom if at the end of the night you realize you're so hungry because you've forgotten to eat yourself. <laughs> you might be a mom if you think that decaf coffee is a joke. You might be a mom if you toss your hair up into a messy bun just to avoid people noticing you haven't showered for a couple days. Now your secret's out. If I see you with a messy bun, you know what I'm assuming. <laughs> you might be a mom if your Instagram really is just your kid's Instagram. Right? I never understood that. I used to get, we had so many friends that had kids before us, and I'd be on Instagram. I'm like, it's just other people's babies. It's just baby gram now. I don't want this. <laughs> Then I had kids, and it changed the exact same thing. You might be a mom if you've ever gone to the bathroom with the door open just so you can make sure your kids don't get into anything. <laughs> Moms, all, all of them are nodding with every single one. Oh, you might be a mom if you've counted down the hours till nap time or till bedtime or if that's a daily thing. <laughs> you might be a mom if you constantly rock and sway even when you're not holding any children. We honestly, we had a friend and they invited us over for dinner one time and, and the kids are long in bed and, and we're standing outside talking and she's literally going like this and at one point she's like doing this. She's like bobbing up and down and she's swaying and I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, I am so sorry. She's like, we're three kids in now and I just can't stop. <laughs> I just sway and bob up and down for no reason. <laughs> you might be a mom if your kids have been in bed for an hour but some reason YouTube is still playing videos about Play-Doh. Uh, you might be a mom if you ask your husband if he's gone to the potty. Anyone? No mother's nodded for that one. All right, so you haven't been mom quite long. I get it, okay. You might be a mom 
If while you're uh, cooking dinner, you're also helping your kids make crafts, doing the dishes, running after your toddler, and checking your Instagram and Facebook all at the same time, and yet still manage to post the only cute photo from the day. <laughs> right? By the way, Instagram is a lie, moms. I see the pictures you post, and I see what happens behind the scenes. I just want someone to make an Instagram that's all the messy things about being a mom, all the worst side of things, because I'm like, that is way more true than the pictures we see on social media. <laughs> you might be a mom if you can make your kids do something with just a look. Oh, and that includes your husband. <laughs> uh. You might be a mom if you've reheated your coffee four times today. All right. So those are some things. Now I'd like to answer some, ask some questions to the mothers. You can just stay where you are. I just need you to stand up. If you're a mom, stand up. There's a prize for this one, by the way. Wow, you guys hopped out of your seat. You're like, ah, I don't want to do that. Oh, a prize. And they're nice prizes. <laughs> My, my mom showed me them today. I was like, oh, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some mom questions. If this has ever happened to you, or this is you, just stay standing. If not, and it's never happened, please sit down. Have you ever had someone spit up on you? <laughs> today. No, I'm just kidding. I like how every single one was an accident. Have you ever been out with your kids and had an accident and realized you didn't pack any backup diapers? See, <laughs> no one sits down. <laughs> See, really, I'm just trying to make all the mothers feel a little bit better about themselves. This happens to everybody. Have any of you ever eaten a snack in the closet to avoid your children from seeing you eat it? Wow. Missed opportunities there, Chica. Missed opportunities. All of you. <laughs> yeah. Have any of you had your children throw up and you tried to catch it? Okay, it's gross how many of you are still standing. We've all done that. I mean, the problem is then you use your hands or shirt and you're like, oh, what am I doing? How many of you moms have ever sent your kids to bed early, not telling them that it wasn't their bedtime? Last night. <laughs> All right, moms, how many of you have used your kids as an excuse to get out of something? <laughs> how many of you moms have used the phrase, go ask your father? No. No. I'm about to say, I use that one all the time, but in reverse. <laughs> go ask your mother. And then I can hear him in the other room ask mom. She'll, she'll be like, oh. <laughs> go ask your dad. <laughs> oh, how many of, have you ever watched your kid hurt themselves and have to turn away because you're laughing? I don't even turn away. They're older. You can do that now. They have less feelings, less emotions. <laughs> How many of you moms constantly find you have kids' songs stuck in your head? Have you ever been singing their kids' songs in the grocery store? And have someone hear you? Me. How many of you have ever gone to the bathroom that didn't need to go to the bathroom? All the, all the, yeah, wow. Yeah, just to, like, get away. Yeah, you don't, I mean, if you don't have to, you're just hiding, is what I'm saying. Oh, Kirsten wins the first prize. Oh, oh, my goodness. Well, you're not done yet. Actually. <laughs> Jess always accuses me of hiding in the bathroom. So it's nice to see that, no, other parents do it as well. I don't hide, I get distracted by my phone, okay? It just happens. Well, let's just make this a little bit easy then. We have two prizes. We have two moms left standing. Perfect. 
Give him a round of applause for finding the best ways to keep their sanity while having children. You never knew that skill would get you a prize, but it has. I was trying to think. This morning, we, were, uh, we have a family chat, and so it's like a bunch of our family, and we're, you know, everyone's saying, oh, happy Mother's Day, and I was thinking about my mom and, and all the impressive things that she did, and you realize how much your moms have done for you over the course of your life, and my mom actually was given an award by my high school. My mom. So we had this sports, uh, like, award ceremony, and so, like, I won, uh, you know, top male athlete or whatever it was. And then my mom actually won an award because she came to so many things and drove so many kids around that they're like, all right, we have to recognize this woman. She has been driving sweaty boys around for, like, nine years in a minivan packed with other people's children. So, you know, unusual sense. (laughs) It's, It's different. Changing a diaper when it's your kid is one thing. Right? Changing in other kids, I don't know why it's worse. So having other swe- you know, sweaty boys in your minivan for nine years, that's worse. So she got an award. And my mom has put up with all sorts of things. She's had one of us kids uh, chew through the drywall, eat her plants. Yes, one of us kids, I won't tell you who, Lindsay, chewed through the drywall for some reason. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> They've had us color on the wall. She used to make me say, my mom, this is all my mom, she's amazing. She used to make us these sandwiches that were like, you know, she'd get really good meat from the deli, healthy bread, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, sometimes sprouts. It would just be loaded with everything. And really, as a kid, all I wanted was peanut butter and jelly. And I had apples. And if I got chips, they were unflavored because I didn't want to have too much other salt and sugar in my diet. And so other kids would come to school with Dunkaroos and all, you know, gushers. And I tried to trade my healthy lunch, and not for the life of me could I ever. I just one time, I just wanted a snackable, Mom. Just one time. I wanted that fake cheese with crackers. So my mom had to put up with me, and they started, like, disciplining me when I didn't eat my lunch. So I had to start ditching them in ditches on the way home. I remember one time we just laid turf. I'd hide my lunch under the turf and just put it back down. They never found it. It's under the grass somewhere in Winfield still. We'd be driving somewhere, usually to a church event after school, and there's a couple times we drive by a ditch, and Dad's like, uh, there's Mike's lunch. <laughs> we just drive by and go, well, you're grounded. I'm really just telling on myself now. But our moms have done so much for us and continue to do now for my grandkids. I can't even go to my mom's house with it without her being like, oh, I found this for the kids. I bought them a pair of pants. We went to the mall the other day, and she walks. I thought she was getting pretzels for the kids, and she's like, oh, here's some pretzels for the kids. Here you go, Mike. Here you go. I'm like, holy moly. I'm like, this is great. Can we go ride the rides now, Mom? She said no, by the way. But they do so much for us. So today we just wanted to have all the women relax, sit back, take it easy. Men, that's your hint for the rest of the afternoon. Tell them to sit back, relax, take it easy. I should have done that game with the men. How many of you, you know? Oh, that's another question. How many of you women have ever received a vacuum cleaner or exercise equipment for Mother's Day? Wow. (laughs) Dad said I ain't that stupid. (laughs) I was just checking because I've heard some stories about some interesting Mother's Day presents. All right. Um, Women, what? Someone tell me, what's the greatest Mother's Day gift you've ever gotten? Has anyone ever gotten an extraordinary Mother's Day gift? Okay, man, we need to do a better job. This is not good. Wow. Jewelry and clothes, but you picked it out. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Jewelry with each kid's birth tone. So that's what we have to beat. Any moms out there? (laughs) Who got flowers this year? Wow, not many. There are a few of a few of them. You you will get flowers. So that's a that's a pretty good one though, Adam. Adam, that's one thing I remember when uh, Adam was just dating Lindsay, and I can't remember what he he got something expensive that she really wanted. Well, Coach Purse, and then there was the Nintendo Wii he found for you when she wanted one, and I was like, all right, you can marry my sister. I can tell you're going to take care of her. You know, you know, on Mother's Day, I can tell you're going to do the things you need to do. But, man, that's your hint for the rest of the day.
see what we can do for our, our wives because they do so much for our families. If I need something, I'll still call my mom. I won't call her today. I'll give her today off. So I need my laundry done tomorrow, though, Mom, if you could help me out there. I'm just kidding. I'm married. My wife does it now. I'll do it today this time. I'm getting in trouble now. Let's play that last video, and then Dad can come up. To all the moms, moms of children who are still at home or all grown up, moms who've outlived a son or daughter, or moms of babies they never got to hold. Moms who've raised kids all on their own or became a mom to someone who needed one. Moms of children who have wandered from God or the longing to be moms who are still waiting. God perfectly arranged each of you into the role you have today. His word recognizes you as capable, strong, and praiseworthy. Everything you do makes our lives more beautiful. Happy Mother's Day. One other question for you husbands. How many of you on Mother's Day when made sort of subtly aware that you might have failed at the Mother's Day gift? <laughs> have ever responded with this, you're not my mother. <laughs> Pretty sure all of you, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I've used that a few times and <clears throat> it was a pff, epic fail. In 1814, there was a young man by the name of Peter Reikley who lived in England, and he ran away from home to join the British Royal Navy. And years later in the 1820s, he, was, he had boarded a ship that was sailing from England to Australia. And they were just a couple days into this journey, and they ran into a storm, and the ship that he was on sank. So there he was floating in the water for a few days. After about three days of him floating in the water, another ship came along and picked him up. A couple days later, that same ship sank, and there he was bobbing in the water again. And a couple more days went by. Another ship came along, ship number three, found Peter Reikley floating in the water, hanging on to a piece of wood, picked him up, brought him on board, and they continued on their journey. Well, about 18 hours later, that same ship hit a reef and sank. So there he was again, floating in the water, waiting for help. A fourth ship came along and picked him up, and he continued on his journey. Well, guess what? About four days into that journey, that ship sank. So there he is again, bobbing in the water. His nickname at the end of this was Bob. So anyway, there he was again, bobbing in the water, and another ship came along. The fifth ship came along, picked him up, and they continued on their journey. Well, guess what? This is a true story, by the way. Guess what? That ship sank and went down. Yeah, so, yeah, moral story is whatever boat he's on, you guys wait for the next one. <laughs> so anyway, there he was again, floating in the water, waiting for help. And then finally, this large steamer came along, and the ship was called the City of Leeds because of the city that it was from, and picked him up. And on this ship, <clears throat> as he was taken aboard, he was, he was um, sent to the infirmary <clears throat> where the doctor had checked him over and made sure everything was okay. And after giving him a clean bill of health, he says to him, the doctor says, um, I wonder if you can do something for us, help us with something. There's a lady on board who, who has you know, also booked a passage to Australia. And she's gotten to know all of the crew and everybody on board really well. She's a very sweet lady. And recently, and just a couple days ago, she, she took gravely ill. And she's been in, um, you know, she's been in bed and she's been sick for a couple days now. But she has been praying nonstop, Lord, I just want to see my son. I just want to see my son. And, um, so he said to him, he says, she's dying and she's asking to see her son. She knows everybody on board. So since you're the only newcomer, would you pretend to just be her son? So Peter agreed. And after all, I mean, his life had been saved 
for the fifth time or sixth time. So he followed the daughter below, or the doctor below deck, and he entered the cabin, and there on a small bed was this frail, sick woman. And gray-haired, silver hair. She was obviously suffering from a very high fever, and so deliriously she was just continually crying out, please, God, let me see my son before I die. Let me see my son before I die. And so the ship's doctor gently pushed the young man toward the bed. Soon, however, Peter Reichley began sobbing, for lying there in the bed was the reason that he just couldn't seem to die. <clears throat> the reason that God's favor and mercy had rescued him. There was a lifeline that had kept him from drowning five times. For lying on that bed was none other than Sarah Reichley, who had prayed for over ten years to be reconciled to her son Peter, who had ran away all those years earlier. The ship's doctor stood in amazement as the young man fell down by the bed and embraced the sick woman. Here I am, Mom. I'm here. It's me, Peter. Within days, Sarah's fever broke. She woke to see her prayers had been answered. She woke to see her son, who had been physically saved from shipwreck and spiritually saved by a Savior who had learned, or that he had learned to trust on the sea. So I, when I read that, I went, I, I went online and I continued to research it because I thought, this, this can't be true. Like, this is just, and it was true. It was based on true events. Um, he was able to tell his story years later. So today being Mother's Day, I mean, typically on Mother's Day, it would be very easy to talk about, you know, honoring your mother and, and all that stuff. And, and we all know that's something that we should be doing as believers anyway, honoring our parents. But today I want to give all of the mothers here, and, and in your shot if you're online, a charge. Now, maybe you're a person as well that you don't have any kids, but there are people in your lives, there's nieces, there's nephews, there's even other families who God has put across your path that you have a connection with, that you have a relationship with. And I'm here to tell you today that your responsibility is not just with your own children, it's with other people whose lives that are within your circle, that are within your nation, your, your, um, um, your group of friends and influence. So this is not just from others. There's a couple things about that um, that story that I really like. I mean, first of all, think about the open seas. Back then when they wanted to travel from England to Australia, they had to go down all the way down to the south of Africa, which is the worst, some of the worst waters in the world, and come around that way. So shipwreck back then was super common, but five in a row, maybe not so much. But it was very common along that route. So back then they had to go all the way down there to go around. So first of all, and it's a massive ocean. You come around the bottom of the Cape and, and you're in the Indian Ocean. It's massive. Five different times he was found. This little tiny dot on a, on a, in a huge ocean. He was found five times. That's the first thing that was so awesome. But the next thing is, is that somewhere during his upbringing, this, whatever, he, he, he ran away from home, but still... Somebody had been living in an upright manner or fashion before him for all those years because here he was, all because of prayer. He had learned somehow, somewhere, by the example of his mother, out there floating in the ocean to just trust God. That is amazing to me. But it, here she was, all these years, praying for her son, Regardless of what she saw, just continually praying for her son, interceding for her child. And as, she was, and as I was reading that, I was reminded of the scripture in Luke 18, starting in verse um, 8, or sorry, in verse 1. <clears throat> One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and they should never give up. Do you hear that? Never give up. It can be easy to give up. It can be easy to look at what your children are doing or, or others that you're praying for are doing and be moved by what they're doing and not being moved by what God has commanded you to do. And I say that as, as a father who, you know, in looking at my son, there was a time when he was taking a detour. And we made a decision one day, a hard and fast decision, that no longer were we going to comment and talk about and glorify what he was doing but rather talk about and to glorify what God had called him to do, what we believe God had called him to do. So we changed our attitude. We changed our talk. We changed our prayer language. We wouldn't go to God and say, God, you know the kind of shenanigans that idiot's up to. You know how stupid he's been doing this and he's been doing, you know, rehearsing the problems all the time, which is so easy to do. Somebody would come up and say to you, go, well, how are the kids doing? 
oh man, you wouldn't believe it. They're doing this, they're doing that, and all that stuff. We made a decision that day. No, he's doing great. He's doing fine. And it wasn't long after that that he was on his way to go ministries, and which was a pivotal turning point in his life. And my daughter-in-law is here because of that pivotal turning point, because we made a decision. We weren't going to talk about what he was doing. <clears throat> Amen. So one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they, could, that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city who said, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people, a widow of that city came to him repeatedly, repeatedly, saying, give me justice in, the, in this dispute of my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. <clears throat> and I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing, her, wearing me out with her constant requests. That is so awesome. But then, so he says this, and then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. I know that today that I'm, I'm in church today and my life has become what it is in Jesus because of my mom. My mom got saved um, after I, I had left home, just after I had left home, and um, she went to a woman's aglow meeting because at that time she was, you know, my, my father who was an alcoholic, um, you know, started going to AA, and one of the things that they, the ladies would go to is, is um, through Al-Anon and so on, is, is she ended up meeting some people from this woman's aglow and going to a Pentecostal church. And then after that, she started praying for her family. And my wife went to a, a woman's aglow meeting a few years later, and then from that point on, I mean, our lives had changed. But because my mom not relenting and my mom not giving up, I have a heritage of faith in my family now because of that. She wouldn't give up. She wouldn't surrender. We never stopped praying for my dad. Now, back then when I first got saved, and we would have Bible studies and whatnot at my mom's place or my mom and dad's place, dad would leave. But years later, because we constantly went back to the judge, we come back again. I, you were here yesterday, I said, no, no, we're back again. We're back again. And my mom continually, pre we talk about my dad in, in a different way. We had to change the way that we spoke about him. And if any of you knew my dad in his later years and whatnot, that was not the guy that we grew up with. But because of God's faithfulness and my mom's repeated prayer and request my dad's life was changed. Amen? So thank you, mothers. Thank you for not quitting. And don't quit. Again, there's people in your life that you get, you get to be a part of their lives. You get to influence them. I mean, that applies to us fathers as well, but today's Mother's Day. And those people that God puts on your heart, don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you see your children doing and what you see these young, your, the young people in your lives doing. Don't be stopped by that. Don't be moved by that. God will watch over his word to perform it. Your job is just to not quit, to be relentless, to continue on no matter what you see, no matter what you're facing. And for that, I say thank you. Amen? Thank you, thank you. Let's just all bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for the gift that is our mothers. We thank you, Father, for all the examples of your goodness, your nature that they taught us, Father. I believe with all my heart that my mom did the very best she did or she could with everything that she had and then some. So we thank you, Father, that, that in this current climate, Lord God, nothing has changed. You still honor prayer and that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman is still availing much, Father God. Hallelujah. And so we thank you, Father God, and we will continue, Lord God, as your word says, to obey our parents, honor our mothers. And we give you, <clears throat> excuse me, we give you thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 
we decided today to keep it short and sweet. We'll do a few announcements and uh, so that you can go and take care of your moms, take them out for dinner or lunch or whatever it is, all that stuff, and uh, go spend time with your family. Amen? Um, so giving, I, I don't have a tithing message today, but you can donate um, online to donate at victorylife.ca um, or leave cash, checks, or whatever in an envelope at the back on your way out. with it, it's, it I, I think it's all part of fulfilling the mission that God's given us to do. But there's something about getting together with community. So thank you for coming. Thank you for coming in, even though it would be certainly would be easy to just sit at home and uh, put on your computer or whatever and just watch Facebook. But we so much love having people in the church. Amen? I do. I, I, I just, I love having buns in the seat. I love seeing people. I love saying hi to people. Um, it's been awesome. I said that, buns in the seat. So we like seeing you in person. All right. Let's say that we always say in our closing uh, statement, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have, and I can do what God says I can do.